You know, some days, guys, uh, are just sadder than others. Hello, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to more CSGO News. My name is Jake. Is this slow enough speech for all of you guys? Well, I'm only slow today because I'm also sad today. And uh, I really do hope you guys are doing well, though. And uh, let's get into it. That being a brand new free agent season, apparently. And with that being said, of course, we had Kusta announcing his free agency. Steel alongside that. And a surprise last night, a bit of a surprise, I should say, as now Ghost Gaming has revealed they're going to be releasing their entire roster. Now, Wardell is still the only member under contract. Everyone else is now gone. And seemingly, the future of Ghost Gaming and CSGO will be taking at least somewhat of a short break out there. And I say a bit of a surprise because because it was um, a, a bit of a surprise is the best word I can actually put out there for it. Although results wise, it does make perfect sense. This roster, even once Freakazoid joined, they were very, in my terms, in my thoughts as well, I still thought the roster had so much potential because even before Freakazoid got there, they were doing so well in North American CS. And then once he arrived, the results kind of just were, you know, top eights here and there around North American scenes, which you can't really survive off of. So it's a bit of a surprise in the fact that I thought this roster had so much potential, not so much of a surprise because they did not live up to that potential. I know you have events like DreamHack Tours where they had a really solid shot to actually show themselves and Freakazoid event unfortunately couldn't attend that event. CS Summit, a pretty disappointing performance there although, you know, that was one of the best CS Summit rosters we have seen in terms of teams out there. We had a lot of top teams there, so unfortunate for Ghost. On top of that, uh, everything right now, you know, the rumors, first of all, many months ago where Steel was going to be leaving the roster, they kept him and they didn't even make a major run anyway because Steel's on the roster. So, it does make sense, but a part of me says it doesn't make sense and I'm just I'm really sorry I'm really I'm kind of sad today so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below maybe say like hey Jake feel better they'll they'll, they'll be back steel will remain in, in CSGO competitively I hope so and I think a lot of these players still have potential Al alongside that Neptune still a rising player I, I would say uh, widely unproven on the roster still but definitely a young talent to look out for in the future it's just a really disappointing day to see ghost gaming leave the scene and now we have tons of players out there like I said in the title as well we have now entered free agent season JD also announcing today, or as of last night as well, July 1st, he will be a free agent. Haji on top of that as he now departs the French Frogs. We guys, we have Sunny, we have Smuya, we have recently Daps, we have the entire Ghost Gaming roster. We have so many characters out there that have been free agents besides Daps and of course the new Ghost Gaming members. All the free agents out there, you know, Kiyoshima along with them, they've been FAs, free agents, for quite a few months now and they have still not signed with teams for the upcoming major. I don't know what this season is, but there are tons of talented players out there currently in CSGO, especially in North America, and it was a prime time, especially now, for an organization to hop in here and maybe snag a brand new lineup. You know, we have TSM. Rumors have been going on for quite some time now, ever since Decay first reported that. They seem pretty hesitant. I don't think 100 Thieves is going to be coming back anytime soon, although I surely hope I'm wrong about that. And when it comes to the Optic Gaming roster themselves, they could be taken up for a very cheap price because as of last night as well, they unfortunately lost to Sprout. Their major run is now done. And with that being said, you know, Tommy also confirmed on Twitter himself these guys are trying to be sold because of a conflict of interest and so they have no bargaining power an organization can come and snatch that lineup up for maybe a cheaper price hopefully hopefully so because of mortals already owning MIBR I'm sure you guys know this so optic gaming their roster is all full of free agents technically uh, still under contract but nonetheless you know close enough to being so there are so many available talented players out there right now will we see a brand new team come up around this time I, I just don't know because you know a chance of a major mixed team it will those qualifiers have already passed so unless an organization wants to take a risk on one of the minor teams we have solidified so far are one of the closed qualifier teams, mixed teams out of North America because the minor teams from North America are not solidified quite yet. I don't see a new organization hopping anytime soon, but yeah, if anyone wants to list down below, I'd love to see your guys' comments as per usual. All of the free agents out there are all of the available players for buyouts. I would love to see that list. I know Nell keeps one on Twitter, but super curious what you guys think right now. Currently are the most talented players not on a roster. And very lastly for all of you guys, I'm going to be breaking down all of the minor teams and surprises so far. The only uh, actual region right now not finalized. They're still in the closed qualifiers for the minor. That'll be North America. But let's hop into it, guys. The, the breakdown of all the minor teams, and then eventually next week we're going to break down my predictions for those said minors. First of all, though, out of Asia, slap those teams on the screen. The biggest surprise, of course, is going to be 5 Power. They did take down Vici Gaming to get there. Besides that, I guess you could say Tai Lu now will play at the minor with a brand new roster with two new members coming in. So we'll see how they compete. I still think there's rumors out there. Talk around Avon 
Vermont as well. And of course, Greyhound are pretty much your top four teams there as well as on the line. Your top four teams uh, have the chances of coming out of there alive. And then for CIS, the surprises do continue, guys. There will have no Vega squadron, no win strike. Vega had a new roster, unfortunately, for Seas. I still think uh, that roster did change, I think, at least two or three members themselves. Win strike, of course, their newest addition being Edward, his first non-major appearance since 2013. So very surprising. And the way they went out as well was, was pretty bad. You know, Dream Eaters was a team who took down Vega squadron. We've heard of them maybe slightly before. And it was actually Team Warthox that take down win strike. So CIS, definitely some big shifts there. Besides that, though, your top teams did go through to the minor. When it goes to Europe, though, this is where we saw the biggest surprises hands down, guys. No Optic, no Heroic, no Windigo, no Virtus Pro. You might not be surprised by the Virtus Pro thing, but either way, we're going to have some big names being eliminated, and those are the four big names that actually were. And in doing so, well, we sent some teams through that were big surprises. Team Ancient, they had the easiest run of any team there, but they, they made it nonetheless. You know, it's kind of weird to see Pronax finally retires, and his former team actually makes the minor, has a chance to go back to the major. I would have loved to see him on that roster still, but you know, not going to argue about that. Team Sprout, very, very excited for them because they got rid of Dennis. They bring in new members as well, and all of a sudden, they still make the minor themselves over Optic Gaming, which was a huge upset in my opinion. Other teams as well, but on the screen for you guys, some still some big uh, favorites obviously did go through out of Europe, but we did see nonetheless some, some big, big surprises seeing Optic go home alongside Windigo and Heroic. Those were, again, we're going to see upsets either way out of Europe, but definitely one of the biggest shocking regions so far. In America, my hometown, my homeland, guys, they've not actually finished yet, so I'll be reporting back on this on Monday when we actually finalize all of our minor teams, because I am going to be gone tomorrow. I do apologize, guys, visiting family, but with that being said, we're still in the closed qualifiers for North America, and there's literally been one upset so far. You might be saying Envy, but you know, either way, Envy also having their um, little bit of issues as well over the past few months, so not a huge surprise to see them in the lower bracket, but Cloud9 loses to Team New Identity, and they are now in the lower bracket, one loss away from losing their major spot. They lose to New Identity. That's Dazzle and Skylar's team. Dazzle, I'm glad to see you back, man. He's been bouncing from team to team. You know, Skylar himself as well. And so Cloud9, a once top tier major winning North American organization has now lost to a random North American mixed team. And if that does not cause trouble, I'm so sorry. Uh, Ryan B at Rush B Media. But as always, hope you guys all enjoyed. Like I said before, I will be gone tomorrow, so I'm going to pre-record one episode for CSGO News. Also, hopefully, I have some esports news out there for you guys, but I'll be back here bright-eyed, baggy-eyed for Monday morning to break down more esports news. As always, thank you all for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have a great weekend. Watch some CS and uh, chill a little bit. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.